Hey guys, this is Jeff, and uh, thank you for tuning in to SRT Armor. And today's video is going to be on my personal M4A1 Mimic clone rifle that I built for myself because I can. Uh, this is actually a 14.5 gun, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's got a lot of good components in it. It's got a lot of standard components in it, and uh, I got a question for you all at the end towards the end of the video of what you think I should do with it. I don't know if I want to keep it in this configuration or turn it into the configuration that has the longer handguard, the quadrail handguard. Um, I like both. Uh, like I said, this is, uh, this is the first of the M4 A1 clone mimics that I've done. And uh, I really like it. It's very accurate. Uh, anybody that's shot it, a few, few friends of mine have shot it and they like it. It's really accurate. The uh, SOCOM barrel, I'll talk more about that in the video so right now i'm going to go ahead and switch the camera to the tabletop view so you can see everything up and close and personal so stay tuned okay so we're back so we're over to my other bench uh on the other side of the room and uh i went ahead and pulled it apart a little bit so you could see some more of the details of the uh the upper receiver and everything else and i also put a, a couple things out uh, to make the content a little bit more interesting so this is not an actual i don't want to say a clone uh, because everything's not colt that's on it so it is uh, it's basically another frankenstein type build something like that i did use pretty high quality components in it and things like that i actually you know when i said it's an m4a1 mimic clone you know with the asterisks uh, that's what it is. It's, it's a mimic and a, a kind of a clone of the M4A1. Uh, some of the key features about this one, though, is the barrel itself is a... I'm going to turn this over, and I know you can't see it. You'll have to take my word for it because I'm not going to take it apart. Um, the barrel is a SOCOM barrel. Now, what SOCOM means is Special Operations Command. Uh, they wanted heavier barrels... Unlike the government profile, that underneath the handguard, it's thinner material. Well, on the SOCOM barrel, it's a heavier profile barrel. It's almost, if it was the same diameter all the way down through here, it would be considered a, a heavy barrel. But from the front sight tower back, it's heavier than the front aspect of it. This is a 14 and a half inch. The barrel itself is a, as I said, it's a 14 and 14.5 SOCOM profile, profile barrel made by Luth AR. It is 4150 chrome molly vanadium. It is not chrome line, but it is magnesium phosphate. It does have an M4 barrel extension and it does have a 1.7 twist. So basically it's the same barrel as the M4 minus being it's not chrome line. So that's that. The front sight tower is actually an A2 and it's F marked. I don't know if you can see it because yeah, right. If you look in there real closely, right down there, it is it is F marked. So it's the same. It's the proper height for using a carry handle. Uh, I don't have a carry handle, but I um, actually got one on order. It's it's on the way, and I promise I'm not going to chop it down and turn it into the uh, the Mark 18 carry handle. Um, I have the, as you can see, it's the Knight's Armament RAS with the covers, the Knight's Armament foregrip the it's a surefire knockoff it's actually not a surefire scout my god it looks just like it though and it's just about as bright so uh if you're curious about that hit me up in the comments i'll tell you more about it uh the upper receiver is a it's an unmarked but it is tdp spec as you know and i've said many 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 times before i spec everything out before i put anything together if it doesn't meet the tdp specifications i don't use it so the upper is completely specced out. Now it does have a Maltec rear flip up sight. Uh, I've got a few of these. Uh, one magically appeared uh, several years ago and the other couple uh, were given to me. Uh, one was given to me when I purchased relatively cheap. So I've got, uh, I think three total or four total of this, these. That's an actual Comp M2 uh, aim point red dot that's on there and back here in the background this is an m4s it's an aim point as you can see i didn't paint it up where you couldn't see it 
Um, yeah, that was a gift. So the upper receiver is, it's TDP spec, but it's not a Colt. It's not marked. It's, it's not, it doesn't have the markings on the upper receiver or anything like that. It is forged. And like I said, it is TDP spec. So that's it for the upper receiver. Now the, uh, here's where it gets interesting. This is a Colt charging handle. It's an old one that I had laying around. Um, this is a black nitride carrier that I purchased. I got a relatively good deal on it and it has, my dogs are barking. It has a uh, magnesium phosphate gas key that I actually put on there and it's, it's staked and I did the military staking, the field expedient staking on that as well. And I want to see just how well this works out. This is, I put the uh, sealant on there and everything else and I torqued, it's torqued to spec and everything else before I, I staked it on everything else. The, uh, the bolt itself is a, uh, Carpenter 158 magnetic, magnetic particle inspected bolt, uh, and it was brand new. I don't know where they came from. I, I purchased about four of these and, uh, I've got the marked, uh, key as well. Uh, so that pretty much takes care of the upper receiver. Now the lower receiver, let me move the stuff back out of the way a little bit so I can get the lower receiver over here and talk about it. Uh, the lower receiver is a, it's a Palmetto State Armory. As you all know, I'm a big fan of Palmetto State Armory and a big fan of uh, Anderson Manufacturing. A lot of people don't like them because they think because they're inexpensive, they're crap. But they're not crap because if you gauge them out, measure them and everything else, and they match up to, again, if all things are equal, if it's the same size holes and same material and everything else, what makes one better than the other? I don't think there is. That's just my opinion. Uh, Pass all the magwell tests and everything else. It's got Schmid lower parts kit. I did not upgrade it. I didn't use KS components or anything in like this because this this gun is going to change. Um, it's got the it's got a six position Colt buffer tube. Sorry about that. And it's got the A2 grip. The pistol grip is it's unique. This is uh, the the angle of it. I don't know how many of you know about it, but Ergo uh, was grips that were used on mil many of the military rifles. And this actually is a mission first tactical grip. I got it relatively inexpensive. I like it. It's it's got a it's a great angle, but uh, I stippled it because I really like stippling. I don't want anything moving around in my hands if they're wet or muddy or anything like that. Wet mud, blood, whatever. I don't want them slipping around in my hands. And uh, as you can see, it's got all, it's all mil spec controls or anything like that. Nothing, nothing fancy or anything like that. But uh, like I said, this is, this is uh, up for change. Uh, I'm going to order, I'm either going to order a M16A1 marked lower receiver, or I'm going to uh, machine 80% uh, lower receiver and send it out and have it marked as an M16A1. Um, or M4A1, I'm sorry. Losing my train of thought. I apologize. But uh, yeah, it's so, like I said, every, it's it's mil spec. I've actually had this out and shot it many times. It's uh, it's zeroed in. I was punching clay pigeons at 300 meters with it with no problem. Um, yeah. So the other thing about it is with the Socom barrel, shut this door. With the Socom barrel, some of the problems that arose with having the heavier barrel is they were getting bolt bounce on the bolts when they were firing in full auto. So what uh, what uh, Crane and Picatinny and everybody decided they got together and they started putting H2 buffers in there. The weight specifically is to slow the bolt down and keep it from doing the bounce. This is, like I said, it's an H2. You can see that. Hopefully you can see that. And it's a, it's a Colt spring. It's kind of dirty, but that's okay. You'll forgive me. Um, but to legitimately make this an M16 or M4A1, it would have to have a full auto fire control group. This is a Registered and marked M M16 M4 A1 
uh, select fire full auto lower receiver. So if this upper is on this, it would legitimately be an M4A1 because of it's also got the H2 buffer in it, uh, the Colt spring and the fire control group. The components are in this are Colt. So yeah, it's, it would be as legitimate an M4A1 that you could possibly get without actually purchasing an M4A1, which you can get, but they're really expensive. So beauty, the beauty of being a dealer manufacturer in an SOT2 is I can do this, I can register them, I can have them, uh, no big deal. So anyway, here's my question for you. And I want your opinion on this. I, I like this setup. Uh, I've used this setup. Uh, very, very, very familiar with it. Uh, I like the optics, either either or. I like the battery life of the M4S uh, as opposed to the Comp M2. Um, and it uses AA batteries, which you can find AA batteries anywhere on the face of the planet, whereas the one, one third N batteries that goes into Comp M2, they're a little bit more difficult to find unless, you have, unless you're carrying them uh, or unless you have them in supply. Uh, if it goes down with no battery, you're kind of screwed. So my question to you is, should I leave this in this, in this configuration with this heavy barrel, or should I get the longer hand guard that extends out over the top of that and brings it out? I'm not going to buy a Knights and I'm not going to buy a Daniel Defense. I don't uh, like spending that kind of money unnecessarily. Uh, so I've been looking at the Midwest Industries version of it, and to me, I think it's just as good. It'll do the same thing that I need it to do. Uh, the only thing is that I'll have to do is I'll have to remove the, the, the sling mount, which is no big deal. And then it'll give me more real estate to put lights, lasers, or anything else on there like that. So your opinion, what do you think? What do you think I should do? Should I leave it like this? Should I get the other hand guard, or should I just build another upper altogether? Uh, I, I would like to have this version, the long handguard version, as well as the M4A1 Block 2, which has the uh, quad rail all the way out, and it's, it's minus the front sight tower. So tell me what you think. Give me your opinion on it like that. Um, I think the only, I didn't really do anything, anything trick to this one other than the front sight tower was a little bit clocked, and I didn't like that. So I, uh, as you can see there, I drilled it. I cut off the uh, bayonet mount and I took off the sling swivel and I drilled it out and tapped it and put set screws in it. And once I had it set to where it was completely perpendicular, straight up and down, uh, that's when I drilled it out and I re-taper pinned it with a 2.0 taper pins to fill it up and I cut them down and everything else like that. The paint jobs on there just because I like it. I think it's cool. It's very similar to the look of the Mark 18 Ma Zero that I have. And uh, I don't know if I put that video on YouTube. If not, I'll try to find it and stick it up there so you can see that one as well. That's, that's my, that was my labor of love. That's about as cold as you can get. Um, and about as clone correct as you can get without, uh, the lower receiver is not a Colt. And I explain that. I go into detail in the actual video that I have. So let me know what you think. Uh, if you don't if you don't like the A2 front sight guns, you're not going to like this. Uh, but like I said, I'm very familiar with it. Um, as well as many other people, you know, anybody who's in GWAT or OIF, you know, they, they use these uh, specifically in the latter, latter aspects of the... Uh, conflict with the SOCOM barrel and the SOCOM barrel is way more accurate. I can tell you that for a fact. And, uh, the cool thing about it is, is it doesn't droop when it gets hot. I haven't, uh, taken it to the mean rounds in order to get to see if it's actually going to droop. I really don't want to do that. I don't want to destroy my gun if I don't have to, but, uh, yeah, it, it functions flawlessly in sim auto. And when it's dropped on the, uh, select fire lower, it, uh, it functions flawlessly as well. And with the H2, and it's got a 0 0.070 gas port, and with the H2 buffer in it, its cyclic rate is a little slower, almost kind of like what the uh, 
if you're familiar with fur friends, it's it almost sounds like and feels like the fur friend system that uh, the military was using, SOCOM was using, and a lot of the SF guns, things like that. Um, I like it. It's a little bit more controllable. It's, it's a lot more fun to shoot when it's full auto, but uh, I don't do that very often because I don't like wasting ammo unnecessarily besides full auto in a in a assault rifle kind of guns, kind of a waste of time, money, and everything else. I won't get on that. Uh, the only other thing I did on the back to the bolt carrier group is it does have Sprinco components in it. It's got Sprinco gas rings, it's got Sprinco spring. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So if you have any questions or anything, hit me up. I uh, wanted to do a, a real quick down and dirty and down and dirty, as you can see, it is dirty. But uh, yeah, I use my guns, and this is one of my uh, this is one of my mimic clones, the M4A1. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe, and uh, look forward to other videos. I've got a couple other rifles that I've done. I did a Mark 8, or I'm sorry, not a Mark 18. Uh, did I have one? I did a Mark 12 mod. I want to say I would consider it to be like a mod two mod three uh but i'll do that video and i'll discuss that more when i do that video so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and uh have a great day and oh by the way donald trump's our president now amen thank you god god bless america god bless you have a great day